Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Public Coin in Tucson, Arizona, actually coming from the Bat Cave, the Coin Cave, whatever you call it. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, some things that are on your minds, mostly relating to uh, your consumer marketplace, right? That's kind of like the topic here between all these little questions that I have to answer today. Uh, as always, TucsonCoinShow.com. You can follow us at OldPublicCoin.com. Old Public Coin on Instagram, the Coin Geek on Instagram, yada, yada, yada. Also, if you don't like how long my intros are, you should see those other guys. Okay. Anyway. All right. Sir, uh, Sir Alfred says, I think it's shady that dealers don't offer spot for generic silver. Why is the customer always getting the haircut? Well, we have uh, not wanting to get haircuts in common, Alfred. And so let's talk about this a little bit. Um, does anyone remember 18 months ago when you could sell silver for two or three bucks over spot? And you could sell Silver Eagles for like 6 or $7 over spot. So I didn't hear, and I'm not picking on Alfred here. Sir Alfred is obviously knighted, and I'm not going to pick on him. And I'm going to say this. Uh, this is a consumer response oftentimes about things, about why can't I, why can't I. I do the same thing with stuff all the time where it's like, why don't I have access to what that guy has access to? Why isn't this, that, and the other? And there's a lot of things going on here. So the the price point, the buy-sell price points on silver uh, changes all the time. It always has. Okay. And I've been doing this since silver was under $5 an ounce. And, you know, I remember we used to, you know, pay 50 cents back and sell it 50 cents over at a time when silver was at five bucks. So if you think about that, we were making 20% margin. Right. And so the hard thing for me in the metals market in general is the higher the prices go, the lower the margins become, the heavier the cash flow load is. And it's just kind of a harder and harder commodity for people to handle, especially compared to 20 or 30 years ago, because now there is competition all over the place between uh, person to person. Right. So if you want to get spot for your silver and you have a trusted way to do that, you can. And what I mean by that is, you can go consumer to consumer, but I warn you to be careful if you're going to meet some guy who's giving you a WhatsApp number on Facebook and you're just going to go ahead and meet him in a parking lot somewhere and sell your silver at spot. You know, the, you know, just, just be careful if you're going to do that. So my point here is that the consumer actually has a ton more options than they used to, whether it's locally or dealing with a national company. Um, the, the silver spot price, uh, the price that you can get for your silver relative to spot is an ever moving target and it's based on actual market demand in other words uh you see market demand drop and so you see the price points drop relative to the spot price so this is all really a was this an adam smith issue is that the who's got the invisible hand of, of the market right I, di I did that wrong didn't i but the invisible hand of the marketplace it, you know it's a real thing when i look around and i talk to people in other parts of the country that run into the same things so uh, a lot of this stuff is cyclical uh, you know, that's just my response on that topic. All right. Sandy saying, oh, that was rapid response. Thank you. Sandy saying, I love foreign silver. The larger, the better, but I also buy foreign clad aluminum and brass. Do I love the coins? Is the price okay? If I'm happy when I leave the shop, it's a great purchase. So we were just talking about how consumers view the marketplace and what's a fair price and what to collect. And I'm, I'm, I'm reading this response because, you know, I'm just brought back to all the time the things that I still see all the time that I enjoy that are coins that many people would call worthless, a waste of time, the type of thing that you can't, you know, you shouldn't buy because it's a bad investment. All of these things, you know, um, coins, coins can go up in value and coins are also a hobby. And, you know, I love the idea here of just like, there's so many cool coins out there that you can purchase that are very inexpensive. You know, in our shop at Old Public Coin, we have a quarter box, we have a box in the middle of the room. I don't know, it's like two feet by two feet or something like that. And it's just full of coins and you can dig through and pick them out for a quarter each. You know, it's the stuff that you typically see, but it's a great place to start coin collecting. And I know people who've been collecting a long time. Actually, have, we actually have a lot of customers who've been collecting a long time who will buy thousand dollar coins and will still pick through the quarter box and find stuff for themselves. And th this is kind of like the collector zeitgeist that I think that I have and a lot of people have, which is you can... You can go ahead and have both, right? Taste great, less filling. Boom. Let's have both. All right. And finally, uh, we got here a doctor. Doc I'm going to say this is, I'm going to pretend this is a doctor. Ben and you all, it is 
Uh, is it acceptable to haggle over world and foreign coins in a brick and mortar store if you can back up your offer with solid comps? Okay, so fun question because we've got an if and then we've got some details to that. Um, or should you should you haggle? Can you haggle? Is it okay to haggle? Is it acceptable? Those are the words he used. So he or she. Acceptable to, of course, it's acceptable to haggle. I mean, I think that um, I here's the thing. When it comes to haggling, it's really funny because I, I found this out later in life from my dad that he he would never haggle all over anything ever. You either buy it, how it's priced, or you choose to shop elsewhere. And it was really funny because I didn't know that about him until much, much later in life. And I thought that was really an interesting perspective because to me, all, all prices are fungible. All prices are negotiable. Um, you know, so I'm kind of a 180 from that. But I can really appreciate the concept of they have it priced a certain way. That's it. That's okay. Um, but it, but most guys are not offended by haggling. What most guys are offended by, in my opinion, or at least maybe it's just me and I'm projecting, are people who are overly aggressive, um, just like they, they haggle as a way of tactic without any thought to what they're doing. In other words, the guys who come in and they're just trying to beat you up for no reason over a coin that's lovely. And that, that's just unnecessary. Now, uh, the question goes on to mention, you know, if you can back it up with comps. So a word about comps, right? So comps are a dangerous, dangerous thing at times. And what I mean by that is uh, I've had comps that really got me hosed. I mean, I used a comp and on a coin and like it wasn't in line with the market. And so I paid too much for the coin. And when I say that, the coin, that's like once a month. <laughs> so that happens a lot. So you got to be careful with comps. The other side of that is, you know, just like comps with houses, it's a comparable to something that's very different. And especially if we're talking about world, foreign, you know, ancient, whatever you, you're talking about. Those two coins are not going to be alike. We're not talking about modern bullion issues here. We're talking about issues that may have the same numeric grade on the holder, but that's where it starts and ends. There's nothing beyond that that is similar between the coins that you're looking at, right? One coin may have had a better strike. One may have had a better eye appeal. And I've seen this lots of times with guys. You might not want to have a comp. Let's put it this way. The seller may not really care much about your comp when you put the two coins next to each other and you would have picked his coin all day long right and so feel free to haggle know your know your price points i think the important thing about comps is how to use them so you don't want to get overly engaged in that but you want to have an idea of what the market value range is you know so you can establish because lots of times with coins that are limited in their production or availability in the marketplace you might see a same coin same grade priced or sell at hundreds of dollars difference over just a year or two's time. So maybe 500, 600, 700. If you know that they've all been trading in that price range, well, you don't automatically go to the $500 price point just because you saw one that sold for 500 when you saw one at six and one at seven. You may be able to use it as a bargaining chip possibly. The thing that's going to bode better for you, bode well for you is, you know, really if the person's had it in inventory at that $700 price point at the top of those comps and they've had it for a long time and, you know, uh, they've maybe just, they've decided, Hey, I'll, I'll sell it to you for a lot less because I've had the coin a long time. And so clearly the market demand doesn't seem to be there for that particular coin. So anyway, lots to think about for a consumer in the coin market. Thanks so much for being here today, guys. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.